I discovered Rome Research a couple years ago and immediately drank the Kool-Aid. I wrote thousands of notes in my Rome graph. I wrote articles about Rome. I paid for the five-year believer plan, and I'm even a small personal investor of Rome. So if anything, I stand to gain money from more people using Rome. Here's why I left it for Obsidian. First is data ownership. But what does it mean to own your own notes? For me, that partly means being able to access my notes at any time, whether I'm online or offline. With Obsidian, this isn't a problem because it stores your notes as local files. So it doesn't matter whether you have an internet connection or not. In contrast, Rome stores your notes on their servers. So first you need to connect to the internet and then log into your Rome account before you can access your own notes. This isn't a problem until there's data loss and there were issues that Rome experienced early on. Personally, the thought of working on something for hours, which I do very regularly, and then losing it all was unacceptable. I want to add here that there is a way that you can access Rome notes offline, but you have to pay for the $500 believer plan. And even then those notes are only stored in your local browser cache. So if you clear that, well, your notes are gone anyway. The ultimate test for whether or not you own your data is trying to migrate off of it. When I tried to do that with Rome, I realized that all the PDFs and images that I'd saved onto my notes were actually being saved on Rome's Google Firebase account. I actually had to create my own Python script to parse my notes, grab those Firebase URLs, download the data, and finally save it into my Obsidian vault. I can't help but think that if I ever wanted to stop using Obsidian, all I'd have to do is not open the Obsidian app anymore. I would still have all of my files on my laptop exactly where I'd left them. Which brings me to my next point. My second reason for switching to Obsidian is future proofing. I used to think that the nodes that I'm writing now would only ever be useful right now and in this context, but that's not true. After more than a decade of my career and also just a lifetime of taking notes, I've realized I forget things. I forget things a lot. And so any of the notes that I write now have to be accessible and searchable and usable to me in 10 years. And Obsidian does that really well because everything is held in plain text. Even now, if I had to use Obsidian, I'd still be able to access those notes. Here it is in VS Code, my IDE of choice. Here's another IDE I use in Atom. Obsidian also works really well with GitHub repositories. I do this a lot for work because we have a lot of our internal documentation on GitHub repositories. The cool thing is my coworkers don't even have to know that I'm using Obsidian. They do anyway because I can't stop talking about it, but they don't have to. There isn't anything that says that you have to be able to use Obsidian to read Obsidian notes because Obsidian notes are just markdown files. Now, Rome uses Markdown, but it is a Rome flavored Markdown, which means that there's a lot of proprietary formats that really aren't going to make sense anywhere other than in Rome. Here's what my notes looked like when I first migrated them from Rome. So they still needed considerable reformatting to be useful anywhere else. Number three is learning in public. I am a big proponent of the theory that in order to learn something, you have to create something new from it. And sometimes that means just documenting the process as you're learning. With Rome, this is a little bit finicky. There is a way to expose your Rome graph, but it is so slow and unusable, and it's in a format that most people aren't really going to understand. This is partly because of the fundamental divergence in the formatting of Rome's notes versus Obsidian. In Rome, every single thing that you write will be a bullet point of some sort. In an Obsidian, you can use bullet points, but you can also just use prose. You can have paragraphs upon paragraphs of information, which means that it's a lot easier to share that. I publish a large part of my Obsidian Vault online using Obsidian Publish. I'll put the link to that in the description so you can poke around. And even though they're still messy because they're my notes, they're still in a very readable format. They're not in this weird bulleted thing that makes sense to nobody but me. If you want to publish your notes, but you don't want to use the service Obsidian Publish, that's okay too. Just grab those files and use some sort of static site generator. I'm partial to Hugo myself and you're off to the races. 
I've found Obsidian in general to be focused on publishing, on creating, on sharing what you've learned. Whereas Rome is better for just working in the corner, doing your own thing and coming up with a system that nobody will ever understand. Number four is performance. I can't help it. I am a performance tester. I care about how fast my tools are because I don't think that they should be getting in the way of me actually doing my work. You know how I said earlier that in Rome Research, everything you write is a bullet point? Well, it's not just a bullet point. Every bullet point is actually an entry in a database. Now that sounds cool because you can do some admittedly very cool block referencing and block embedding at a level that Obsidian hasn't quite gotten to yet, but the downside is that there are significant performance disadvantages for that. Here's an awesome site that has done a lot of benchmarks for many personal knowledge management tools. And guess what? Obsidian was a hundred times better than the competition. Number five is community and ethics. I intentionally said in the intro that when I discovered Rome, I drank the Kool-Aid because when you sign up to Rome, you're said to be part of the Rome cult. And that's very telling. The room team also has an unfortunate history of banning those that don't agree with them. Here's something on Reddit about how many users were banned from the Rome Research subreddit for not much of anything. On Twitter, I've also seen some puzzling instances of arrogance or elitism on the part of the Rome team, and in particular, their founder, Connor White, in response to very innocuous questions about users maybe not understanding Rome or just asking questions. In contrast, the Obsidian community has been nothing but inclusive and warm and friendly. And the two developers, by the way, there are only two developers on Obsidian, which is really impressive, but they are active on the Discord channels and I've personally interacted with them. And they've both been very thoughtful and receptive to constructive criticism or me reporting bugs. I also really like that there are a lot of initiatives that are community led that are around Obsidian. There's the Obsidian Community Talks, which is a series of presentations by regular users of Obsidian, including me, because I, I spoke about how I use Obsidian for D&D. But it gives you the sense that the communication is two way, that I am also helping Obsidian by participating in this community. Those were my five, but here's a bonus because I know this will be a deal breaker for a lot of people, and that's pricing. Rome Research hosts all of your notes, and part of that means that they incur more costs than Obsidian does. As a result, Rome costs $15 a month on the monthly plan, or $13.75 if you're on the annual subscription. And then if you paid for the Believer plan like I did, that's $500 for five years, which is probably their cheapest plan at about $8 a month. Obsidian, on the other hand, is completely free for personal use. You can pay a little bit more on their Catalyst plan. That's just to give them something to support their development. Or if you're using Obsidian for your business, then you pay for the commercial plan. And then you also have add-ons like Obsidian Publish and Obsidian Sync. But those are by no means necessary to get all of the features that Obsidian brings to your life. You'll get all the access to plugins and all of the community features for nothing. I can't help but question Rome's value. Look, I'm not here to tell you which tool is unequivocally best for you. You're still gonna have to try them both out and make a decision for yourself. But despite hundreds of hours that I've invested into Rome, not to mention $1,500 of my own money, Obsidian is clearly, hands down, the better tool for me across all categories, even if I may be losing money by saying so. Thanks for watching. Salamat.